Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Thank you for that musical selection. And as we get into the word of God, say, let me take this moment right now to express my sincere thanks and my gratitude to each one of you all, especially for those shout outs today. I praise the Lord for each one of my friends that have uh, come today to express their love and appreciation. I respect you all so very much, love you all so very much. What an honor and a joy it is to be able to celebrate Pastor Appreciation Month. It's a joy for me to be called your, your pastor here at Shiloh. I count it a joy and an absolute privilege to be able to lead the people of God. And I want to say thank you once again to each one today that gave a tribute. Thank you for your cards. Thank you for your love. Uh, even thank you for the gifts that you've given as well. We praise the Lord for you. And we continue to pray for each one of you all. Let me just say this real quick as well. Let's continue to press together, press together, press together. That's what we need to do in these days that we live in right now. And I look forward to continue leading each one of us as the Holy Spirit leads us through these times right now. Listen, I believe it's a word from the Lord today. and I'm excited to share God's word. And I pray right now that you're excited to get into the word of God with me today as well. Hey, I'm going to ask you to pause right now. Let's pray. As we get into the word of God, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are absolutely grateful and thankful that you've given us another opportunity, Father, to open up the pages of sacred scripture. Lord, I do ask now that your Holy Spirit would indeed think through my mind. God, please speak through my vocal cords. May it be all of you and none of me. May somebody, oh God, today be encouraged, challenged. But most of all, God, may somebody find Jesus Christ and be saved. We love you and we thank you even now for our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, why don't you grab your Bibles right now, grab your Bibles, your iPads, your tablets, whatever you have today. I want to share with you from a very familiar book of the Bible today, a very familiar book. I want to invite you right now to go to the book of Job, the book of Job. For those who are studying scripture and biblical scholars or whatnot, you'll recognize that many people will suggest that the book of Job is literally the oldest book of the Bible. Not Genesis, but many will suggest that Job is the oldest book of the Bible. And we're going to look at today a, a familiar story. And I want to share today uh, from a burden once again that's in place on my heart as it relates to the times that we're going through right now, the time that we're living in right now. And I believe that today's word is going to encourage you. Job chapter number two. Do you have it right now? Job chapter number two. Hope your Bibles are open. I got mine. Let's get to the word of God. Job chapter two. And beginning now at verse number one, the Bible says these words, Job two and verse one. The Bible says, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, where cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, have thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And still he holds fast his integrity, although thou moveth me against him to destroy him without a cause. Verse four, the Bible says, and Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath, he will give for his life. But put forth thou thy hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So went forth Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils and with the sole of his feet unto his crown. And he took him a posture to scrape himself with her, and he sat down among the ashes. Verse 9, the Bible says, Then said his wife, Unto him, does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But verse 10, our last verse, the Bible says, But he said unto her, Thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speak. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall not receive evil? 
And all this Job did not sin with his lips. Who says amen to the word of God? I want to preach today on the subject entitled from Job 13 and verse 15. Though he slay me, I'll still trust in the Lord. I know I have a virtual amen right now. Though he slay me, I will still trust in the Lord. Friends and family, I had the awesome privilege of growing up with grandparents. I mean that grandparents who absolutely knew the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm specifically thinking about my grandmother, Annie Lee, uh, born in Selma, Alabama, matriculated, moved on to Huntsville, Alabama. I'm thinking about Annie Lee right now and I had a grandmother that absolutely knew the Lord for herself. Um, no, I'm talking to somebody right now, so I'm praising God for our seasoned saints, grandma in them, grandfather and grandparents and those who are senior amongst us. I praise God for you on today. I come to this preaching moment thinking about grandparents and thinking about how you all have set the way, the seniors in our congregation, and how we can be encouraged because of your walk in Jesus Christ. My grandmother, she knew God for herself. Are y'all hearing me? I mean, my grandmother, she knew the Lord. It was as if when she was talking to God, that she was having a face-to-face -face conversation with God. She didn't have to go to seminary. Matter of fact, these senior saints, they didn't have to have a theological degree. They didn't have to understand Greek and Hebrew and parse kind of verbs and all that. No, when they opened up the word of God, when they began to spend time with God, it was as if God was speaking directly back to them. I praise God for every single senior uh, citizen, for every single seasoned saint that is listening to me right now. I praise God for your ministry. I praise God for your faith. I praise God today as we stand up on your shoulders today. We recognize that you have taught us mighty lessons in the word of God. These seasoned saints, they recognize that if God be for them, they can nobody else be against them. If you recognize one of these individuals, like my grandmother, Annie Lee, when she talked to God, when she prayed to God, I knew that that prayer was getting through. Not because she was perfect. Oh, no, absolutely not. Not because she had it all together. No, she had a whole lot of sins, like a whole lot of us. But when she communed with the master, when we should be able to open up the word of God, our ancestors, our senior citizens, they have paved the way. And one of the most important lessons that Annie Lee taught her grandson was this. Don't you ever give up on God. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you help me preach a little bit today, y'all? I'm just getting started. But help me for a second. Don't you ever give up on God. I like that today because that's what I find in the text right now. Listen, in this world that we're living in right now, with all of these events that are going on, with all of the news that we see around us every single day, listen, y'all, in this life, the Bible declares that we will have tests. We will have trial. We will have difficulty. There will be despair and drama and headaches and heartaches. There will be a time of trouble, according to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, that we've never seen before. And I want to remind you today, y'all, that we are headed to that time of trouble that is before us. But the good news in the word of God is, is that God is on our side when we have postured ourselves when we have sought the Lord, when we recognize who God is and what God will do, we will recognize that God will be with us in a present time. And he's a present time. He's a present help in the time of trouble. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He's a present help in the time of trouble. That's who our God is. And I want to talk about that today from the story of Job. If you remember Job chapter 1. I read Job chapter two, but let's go back to Job chapter one for a second, because the Bible says in Job chapter one and verse one, that there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, a man that feared God and eschewed evil. Can I stop right there? The Bible says the land of Job born in this land of us. 
that Job was a, a man that was perfect and upright. Job was a man that sought the Lord with his whole heart, mind, and soul, body, and strength. Job was a man that, 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 that sought the spirit of God. And the Bible says that Job feared God and eschewed evil. In other words, Job loved God, but he could not stand evil. Uh, verse number two, the Bible says, And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 300 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one of them his day, and sent and called their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so that when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them. And rose up in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. The Bible says that, that Job was a perfect man. He was an upright man. He was a man that reverenced God. He was a man that feared God. He was a worshiper of the true and only God. The Bible says that Job could not stand evil, but watch the movements of the text. Because the Bible says that Job had seven sons and three daughters, 10 children in total. His substance, oh Lord, his substance was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household. The Bible says that Job was the greatest man of the East. Now hold up, come here for a second because you already know where I'm going right now. It pays to serve the Lord. You can argue with me all day and all night, but I'll argue right back with you that when you serve God, God will open up doors that no man can shut and he'll shut some doors that no man can open. It's not just a cliche. I am a living witness. I've seen it with my own eyes, y'all, that when you serve God, God, he steps in and God does some amazing things. I was sharing at prayer meeting every now and then. I pinch my own self. I pinch my own self and say, God, man, you have been good to William Lee. I'm like, God, you've been wonderful to my family. And I know just like Job, that even with the good, every now and then Job reminds us that some bad will come our way as well. Oh, Job was rich. Job had prosperity. Job had a whole lot of stuff. But the most important thing that this man Job had was a connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only was Job upright, but the Bible says that Job was a prayer warrior. Yeah, can I let me hang out there for a moment? Job was a prayer warrior. Job knew the power and the protection that God gives when you call upon his name. The Bible says that Job's children, that every single day, Job will pray for his children. And I've come to this moment to remind us as parents that you always ought to pray for your children. I don't care how old they get. I don't care how young they are or anywhere in between as a father. Come here, daddy, as a father, it is your responsibility to call upon the name of the Lord for your children. Daddy, your prayers matter. Daddy, it matters that you surround your family with prayer and with power from on high. Mother, God hears your prayers. There is nothing like a praying mother. Matter of fact, I would suggest to you quite boldly today that the only reason why some of us are here right now is because of the prayers of a praying mother. Come on, holler at me right now. Is there somebody in the virtual chat that can testify my mother prayed for me? My daddy prayed for me. My grandma and them prayed for me. My church prayed for me. Yeah, and your pastor, he calls upon the name of the Lord for you as well. There is something about the power and the, the, the presence of God in prayer. The Bible says that every single day when Job's children are living their life away from Job's house, the Bible says that Job was sacrificed. That, that Job would every single day kneel down and begin to pray for his children. Why? Because the text says that maybe when they were feasting in their house, maybe when the children were relaxing, sitting out on the back deck or sitting down and chilling. Maybe when they was having a little gathering in the house that one of these children had sinned. So Job made sure 
that he interceded for his children every single day. That's a powerful parent right there. And that's a positive and positive and powerful parent that understands the power of prayer, praying for your children and praying for your family and interceding on behalf of them. And I'm going to be honest, y'all, I'm going to slow down for a minute because uh, if there's ever a time that we need to intercede for our families, that time is right now. I told you I came to this preaching moment with a sense of burden and with a sense of passion today, as always. And I want to remind you right now that there is an attack against the family of God. This is absolutely no season, y'all, to become lax in our time with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is now time, as I preached a couple of weeks ago, to get your house in order. As Hezekiah reminded us, to get your house in order to make sure that your family is covered, that there is a hedge of protection around your family. Job demonstrated what it meant to be a praying father, to be able to call upon the name of the Lord for his children every single day. Job was not only rich, Job was not only upright, Job not only was living for God, but he was a prayer warrior. And the Bible says this. That Job continued to pray and he was man enough to understand the power and the priority of prayer. Listen to me, somebody again. I believe there's the prayers of the righteous. <laughs> I believe it's the prayers of the saints. I, I'm going to call some names and, and please don't get offended, but I, I believe y'all it's like the prayers of Mother Stewart. Uh, Elder Stewart. It's, it's the prayers of, of an Elder Abernathy. It's the prayers of a Frank Davis. It's the prayers of, 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 of Abraham Lloyd. It's the prayers, y'all, of the righteous that pushes us and allows us to stand. If there's anything we need to understand in these last days is that we got to push when it comes to prayer. We got to pray until something happens. Job was praying. Job was living upright. Job was doing everything think he could. However, the enemy stepped in. Yeah, because you got to recognize that when you pray and when you live for God, there's always a war that's going to take place here in our lives here on this planet. When, when you stand up for God, you got to recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that the enemy is not playing games with us. The enemy is out to kill us. The Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, for the thief cometh, but to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus, said, I've come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Hear me, y'all. The enemy has come in to try to divide your family. The enemy has come in to try to oppress the people of God. The enemy has come in to try to destroy your mind, to destroy your spirit, to destroy everything around you. And I want to remind some person right now that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Do you hear what I just said, y'all? The enemy has come and tried, tried to destroy us, but we have a God. We have a Savior. We have a Jesus who is more powerful than the enemy is any day of the week. The Bible teaches y'all that victory belongs to us when we side on the side of God, but that does not negate the fact that every day, that every week you will recognize, y'all, that there's a warfare that's going on right now. Can I go back to the text right now? Because in Job chapter 1 and verse number 6 now, the Bible says, There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And who showed up? Look at verse 6, y'all. Who showed up? Satan also came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where cometh thou? Don't you miss this. And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. Hear me, somebody. The Bible says that, that one day the sons of God came to present themselves. Now I don't got time to argue whether that was in heaven or whether that was on earth. So, uh, not on earth, but somewhere in the cosmos. If that was in heaven or somewhere in the cosmos, I frankly believe that it probably was not inside of, of heaven because the Bible says that, that God had kicked Satan out of heaven already. And I don't believe that Satan has a, a card that he can go in and out. I don't believe that God gave Satan a key to, to get in and out of heaven. 
We can argue about that another day. All I know the Bible says is that somehow when God is having a board meeting <laughs> with the sons of God, that somehow Satan shows up. And when Satan shows up, God says, Satan, where have you come, come from? Where have you been doing? And notice now that when God questions Satan, that Satan speaks with honesty right now. He said, well, Lord, I've been on earth. I've been walking up and down in it. Hold up. I've been teaching now for a good while, y'all. We already know that the devil lives on planet earth. He does not live underneath the earth. No, he lives on planet earth. And according to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says, be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says that he's always working. He's always walking. He's always trying to bring somebody down. That's why the Bible says you got to be vigilant. Ephesians chapter 6 reminds us that we got to put on the whole armor of God that we may able to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Well... When Satan says, I've been walking up and down in it, the very next thing, oh, I know you know the text, so just hang out for a second. The very next word that, that God says is, Satan, well, you've been walking up and down the earth, and God already knows what Satan's agenda is. So the Bible says that in verse number eight, and the Lord said unto Satan, have thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. King James, it simply means he hates evil. Hold up, y'all. Come here, pull up a seat and hang out with Pastor Lee for a moment because the Bible says it was God. Ah, ah preach, Pastor Lee. It was God who asked the enemy as he was walking up and down the earth, he says, okay, Satan, uh, I know you're walking up and down the earth, and I know that you're looking to bring havoc on somebody's life. I know that you're looking to try to divide some family. I know that you're trying to oppress some child. I know you, Satan. You are full of demonic beings and spirits. You're always trying to oppress. So, Satan, have you considered my man. <laughs> Look at God. God's like, have you considered my man, my boy, my spiritual man called Job? And the Bible says, y'all, that God begins to brag on Job. Let me tell you something, everybody. This season that we find ourselves in right now, this time of COVID-19, this time of political uh, going back and forth this time of unrest in our country. God is looking for somebody. Come on, say amen right now. God is looking for somebody who's going to stand for him no matter what. God is looking for a preacher. God is looking for a ministry leader. God is looking for a saint that will stand for him no matter what. Listen, y'all. Sometimes God allows us to go down before he brings us up. Sometimes God allows for the tragedy to be your triumph. Preach, Pastor Lee. Sometimes God allows for your difficulty, for your despair, for your depression, for your everything that you're going through to be, to turn it around for your good. Sometimes God allows for the crazy, <laughs> for the foolishness. Sometimes God allows for the challenges to come out of nowhere. Not because God doesn't love us. Not because God doesn't care about us. Not, not because God is some hard taskmaster. No. Sometimes it's just God who is behind the cosmic curtain. Who is rooting us on. Who is cheering us on. Who knows that when the spirit of God lives in inside of us. That we're more powerful through his spirit than any other thing y'all. Sometimes God allows for the difficulties to come your way to build you up in your faith. Mm. Oh, I know that's a hard word for somebody. That's why the psalmist could declare, David could declare, it was good that I was afflicted. That I may know the statutes of the Lord. Every now and then you got to have a test. 
because your test will turn into a testimony. Come on, say amen, somebody. Every now and then, you will be brought down low because when you get down low, you will recognize the low, I am always with you. Sometimes you will be uh, looking up and saying, God, what's going on? But when you look up, oh, Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Sometimes, y'all, we won't understand why we are going through what we're going through. But we recognize, y'all, that there's a great controversy going on. And God is going to win in the end. Matter of fact, can I, can I pause and can I correct that right now? God has already won. Victory belongs to us. But we still are going through this fight right now. Revelation. Are, are you, Revelation chapter 12. <laughs> Yeah, Revelation 12 and verse 12. The Bible says these words, Revelation 12, verse 12. The Bible says, uh, Woe, uh, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil is what? Come down to you having what? Great wrath because what? Huh, huh? Look at the right. Because he knows that he has, but what kind of time? A short time. Woe to the earth, woe to the sea, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the enemy knows that his days are numbered. That's why y'all hell keeps on breaking out. That's why y'all so much tragedy is all around us. God is not the author of tragedy. God is not the author of confusion. It's the enemy himself. And the Bible says, woe to the earth, woe to the sea, woe to the inhabitants, because the devil has come great down, knowing that he has but a short time. But I'm so glad, y'all, that even though the devil knows that he has a short time, I'm so glad that when I read Revelation chapter 20, that there's going to come a day on that millennium, the Bible says, will the devil be thrown in a bottomless pit? He will have nobody else to be able to tempt nobody else to be able to spring suffering to that for a thousand years he will be sitting there thinking about all of the misery that he put everybody through and after those thousand years revelation chapter 20 the bible says that he will be loose from his prison for a little while and then the bible says that he will gather together everybody from the wicked uh Cain, all the way down to the very last wicked person on earth. We, as the people of God, will be coming down. I will be as in heaven. We will be able to look, and the Bible says that fire comes down from heaven out of God and destroys the devil himself. Yo, there will come a day where the enemy will be defeated. I'm sorry to get so, so, so passionate about this, y'all, but I'm so sick and tired of the devil pimping too many folk. Preach, Pastor Lee. I'm sick and tired of the enemy having his way in too many of our families. I'm sick and tired, y'all, of the enemy bringing all kind of demonic depression and suicidal thoughts. And yeah, this month is domestic violence, and I would not want to end this month without saying it is the enemy, everybody, that allows for families and it comes in and, and allows for a man to beat a woman or allows for a woman to beat a man. That is of the enemy and is not of God. I'm going to say something right now. And I said, it, I think I said it every single year. I've got my pink tie on for breast cancer as well. But let me tell you something, my sisters and my brothers, but my sisters, number one, first, if you find yourself, preach, Pastor Lee, in a relationship and you know good well that this is not of God. You better give the deuces. Come on, somebody. I didn't say that you was married. No, I'm not talking about give the deuces in your marriage. I'm saying you got to, some things you got to fight through and get some counseling. Amen. Amen. Your marriage may be worth fighting for. But you in a dating relationship, you dating and, and you find yourself in a situation where you know it's not of God. Peace. Wouldn't want to be. You leave that thing. And, and women, I can't hang out one more time, y'all. Recognize it again, domestic violence this month, y'all. And you find yourself in a relationship and he lays hands on you. And it's not holy hands. Can I preach, y'all? You have every single right to defend yourself and get out. Did you hear what I said? God does not expect for you to be a punching bag. 
God does not expect for you to get your head beat up inside down. God does not expect for you to take bruises verbally or as well as physically. That means, y'all, that domestic violence is of the enemy. It is of the devil himself. And you ought to get out as fast as you can. I know. I heard it all the time. Well, he loves me. He only beats me every now and then. Every now and then, the devil is a lie. You are nobody's punching bag. And my brothers, <laughs> I think I've lost my mind. Domestic violence happens to you as well. Happens to men as well. I know somebody just kind of said, <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Some women beating up men. Oh yes, it happens. And that's of the devil itself as well. The devil's job is trying to oppress and to control and God says, who the sun set free is free indeed. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. God does not expect you to be beat up. Come on, somebody. That comes from the very pits of hell. The Bible says the same thing that happens in Job now. That the devil begins to pimp. That the devil begins to maneuver and, and cause tragedy. In Job chapter 1, the Bible says, check out the text now, Job chapter 1, the Bible says, in one day, can you imagine this? Can you imagine in one day all the tragedy? The Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 13, the Bible says that Job's kids were eating and drinking. Remember now, Job is praying for his children because any good father knows that your children are your reward. Any good parent knows that children matter. Bible said that Job was that Job's children were eating and drinking the oldest brother's house. They were relaxing all of a sudden. Verse 14, the oxen and the donkeys died. Verse 15, the servants were killed by the sword. Verse 16, fire comes down from heaven and kills the sheep and the servants. Verse 17, y'all see this one act after the other. The moment that God says, Satan. You can try to do anything you can to Job, but you're not going to take his life. The Bible says that Satan, like a madman, he rushes there and he inflicts his family. He inflicts everything he can. His cattle are gone. His camels are gone. His flock is gone. His children that were in the house, they're gone as well. Verse 18 and 19, Job chapter 1, the Bible says that a great wind came out of the wilderness and hit the house where Job's sons and all 10 of them, y'all, and his daughters, they all died. In one day, Job was sitting on top of the world. On one day, Job had everything you could think of, and that very same day, he lost everything. Pastor Lee, what in the world are you saying right now? I'm saying this, y'all, that you can be on top of the world one minute, and the very same minute, hell can come your way. Peace can be in your family. But the very next minute, the very breath of hell can be launched at you. Now, let me remind you <laughs> of a piece of good news right now. Um, the, the Bible is clear that the devil can only go so far. <laughs> I preach. Uh, are you still there? Can, can I put a smile back on your face right now? Um, uh, the devil can only go as far as God permits him to go. God is still sovereign and God is still in control and God is still the ruler and God is still in control of everything that is happening in this world. The devil is on a leash. He can only go so far. Not only go so far. I was reading in, in Spirit of prophecy. Some of y'all understand that right there. And uh, Ellen White says that God weighs and God measures every single trial before it comes your way. Can I go? Can I just preach y'all for a few moments? I want to keep you all day. Uh, Ellen White says that God, He measures. He, he measures and He weighs. Every single trial before it comes your way. Remember, Ellen White says that God first, that, that the trial, it first crosses the desk of God. And God then will look at that trial and will determine whether or not you're able to stand. God looks at that trial and says, you know what? Well, 
Shiloh, people of God. Well, let me look at them right now. Satan, you want to do this? And can I give you a praise break right now? Because there are some things that the devil wanted to come your way, but God blocked it. There are some things that the devil tried to do, but God said, not so, Satan. There are some things the devil wanted to bring up on your family, but God said, no, absolutely not. I give God praise for every single thing that I don't even know about that God blocked. I'm so glad that God said, nope, uh, you're not going to get in that car accident. Nope, you're going to still be able to stand. Nope. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you will be able to raise up a standard against the enemy. I'm so glad, y'all, that there are some things that God has blocked from coming your way, from coming my way. Are you hearing me today? You ought to put a smile and say hallelujah. Matter of fact, type amen right there. Come on, somebody. Type hallelujah. Type thank God for blocking it. Thank God for not allowing for the enemy to have his total way in my life. And there are other things, y'all, that God would allow to come your way. There are some tests that God would allow to come your way. There are some trials that God allows to come your way. And he allows it because when he waited and he measured it, he said, okay, yeah, it's cool. Just like Joel, they're they good. They're good. They going to trust me. They're not going to complain. They're not going to murmur. They're not going to throw in the towel. They're going to have that Job-like faith. If y'all can't catch me, but I've been preaching for the last several weeks, Wednesday night, Friday night, Sabbath morning. That the time of trouble, y'all, is creeping up on us faster than we can imagine. There's this whole drama, y'all, it's been played out before our very eyes right now. And I know that all eyes are looking at November 3. And I want to declare to you right now that whatever happens after November 3, you can rest assured that whoever is the new president, that God is still in control of the affairs of this life. That God is still knowing every single thing that's going on. And God will make sure that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yeah, we have to go through some trial. But even through the trial, God will see us through. Well, the Bible says that Job, that God begins to brag on Job. And you know what I'm going to say. Can God brag on you? For real, can, can God brag on you? Can God look at you and say, man, there goes somebody right now that has faith. There goes somebody right now that even though they've lost a loved one, they're still holding on to me. Oh, there goes somebody right now. They're in financial crisis, but they still have faith. Oh, there goes somebody over there that's lost their job, but they know that God will open up a door that no man can shut. That person still has faith. Listen, y'all, you got to have faith. You got to believe. You got to know that God is on our side, y'all. The prayers of the righteous, the Bible says, availeth much. Well, God begins to brag on Job. And as God brags on Job, Job has no idea why he's going through all of this. And this year I've wondered, man, why are we going through all of this? Well, 200 some thousand people have died this year because of a virus. God, why all of this? Death over here, death over there, tragedy over there. God, why all this? I don't have an answer for you today, but I do know this before I shut it down today. I do know this, that just like Job, God was behind the celestial curtain. God was behind it and God was saying, hold up, y'all. Chill out. Just watch me. Just watch what I'm going to do. I know it looks bad right now, but God says you got to hold on through it all. Well... Job don't understand why he's going through it. But Job understood at this moment, at this early part of our text, that God was still with him. I go back to my grandmother in Huntsville, Alabama, by way of Selma. I used to stay with my grandparents every now and then when I would go to Huntsville and spend a lot of time and uh, talk about knowing God. I would get up around 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock, every blue moon. I had to use the bathroom. I had to use, just like you, don't judge me. Just like, had to get up and use the restroom real quick. And go to the bathroom. I passed by my, my grandma's room, and there would be a little light on. And I'll see grandma <laughs> on her knees. She's 
have a little talk with Jesus at three and four o'clock in the morning. I'm talking about folk that know God. Three or four o'clock in the morning on her knees. When's the last time you got up early in the morning and spent time with God in prayer? Come on, come on, I'm preaching to you right now. When was the last time you shut down your social media for a while and spent time with God in prayer? When was the last time you allowed God, not Pastor Lee, when was the last time you allowed God to minister to you through his holy word, y'all? The Bible reminds us, y'all, that we got to seek the Lord while he can be fine. Found. The Bible says in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, that Jesus rose up early in the morning, spent time with his father in prayer, and God blessed his life every single day. Why? Because Jesus understood the power and the presence of God that was needed in his time that he lived in right now. That day, I was praying to God every morning. I heard her calling the names of her grandchildren. I heard, called her, I heard her calling the name of her husband. <laughs> and her husband got saved. Come on, son. Oh, y'all don't know my story, man. My, my grandfather had spent years out the church, a veteran himself, fought for our country, but was never treated like a, a, a great human being in the 60s when he came back. Grandpa was out drinking and doing everything he could, but it was the prayers of a praying grandmother. It was the prayers of a wife that was praying for her husband. I'll never forget it, man. My grandfather gave his life to Jesus at the Madison Mission, 7th Avenue Church of Huntsville, Alabama. He got saved, y'all, at Madison Mission. I drunk all of his life, but now every single week, y'all, he goes to church. He was going to church, y'all, before COVID, y'all, and he still tunes in because there's something about the power of prayer. Oh, I got to hold my peace right there. There's something, y'all, when the enemy tries to hold you down, but a prayer somebody is able to push you toward the throne of grace. My grandma was pushing him toward the throne, toward the throne of grace through prayer, not through nagging, through prayer. The prayers of our seniors mean so much. The Holy Spirit is what must move in our lives. Now, let me do it like this. Um, um, you see, it matters what's on the inside of you. Are y'all still there? Come on, say amen. You still there? Come on, say amen. Uh, it matters what's on the inside of you. Too many of us are just full of hot air. You better preach. Too many of us as Christians are fueled by hot air. First time something crazy happens, you're ready to leave and you're ready to give up because you got, you got hot air on the inside of you. But the Bible says that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let, let, let me do it like this. Let me use an illustration real quick. I'm, I know... Pastor Lee loves illustration. Uh, got it, got it right here. Filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that we are a flame. And we got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, it, ma it, matters, what we're, it matters what we're filled of. All right, so I got this balloon right. Yeah, y'all back now. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Okay, yeah. So I, I got this balloon right. And um, when the fire comes your way, because the Holy Spirit is also, uh, not only is he a fire, but sometimes the fires of life come our way. And it matters what we're filled up. Oh, y'all hear me right now. It matters what you're filled up. Because when the fire comes your way, will you be able to stand or will you pop and blow up? There's too many. This, this is the Christian that's filled with hot air. This, this is the child of God that, um, that shows up, that tunes in every now and then, but you got all hot air. God, help me right now. I don't want to do this like this, but it, it's like this. They got, they got hot air. They got hot air. Poof, they just pop. Yeah, Y'all saw me like, whoo. Yeah, that's a hot air Christian. Because they know a little word, but they feel with hot air. They got a little word, y'all, but as soon as the flames come your way, you're ready to back out, y'all. Let me remind you one more time that the flames are coming our way, that there's difficulty that has your name on it. Job is going through hell, but Job has something on the inside of him that's not hot air. Job has the Holy Ghost. Job has the Spirit of God. Job has something on the inside that is able to keep him in perfect peace. Who do I have a witness whose mind is stayed on him? Job has the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has him. Can I show you this right now? Y'all remember the other balloon? Uh, it was big, right? 
And uh, that's what we like. We like some big stuff. But every now and then, you got a little small something. And this little small balloon right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can I do it like this? It's going through the fire. This is Job. This is us going through the fire. But watch it right now. Oh, the flame is on it. Okay, are y'all seeing it? Yeah, yeah, the, the flame is on it. But wait a minute. How come the balloon didn't burst? Are y'all seeing it? I'm not, I'm on this thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm touching that thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the flame is on it, but it did not burst. Can I tell you right now why it did not burst like the other one did? Here are the remnants. I'm sorry, here are the remnants of the first one. Here is the next one that's still intact. What was the difference? It matters what's on the inside of you. This was hot air. This got some substance. This got some Holy Ghost. This has power on the inside. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm preaching to remind somebody today that in these last days, in this wicked world that we're living in, in this world full of trial and difficulty and pain and sorrow, in this world where the enemy comes in like a flood and tries to bring havoc on our families, havoc on our children, havoc on our marriages, havoc in preachers' lives, I want to remind you today, hey, it matters what's on the inside. It matters that you have the power and the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Ah, let me break it down like this. The Holy Spirit is the one gift that brings every other gift in his train. The Holy Spirit will keep you in perfect peace. That the Holy Spirit will allow you to have a good night's rest. The Holy Spirit will give you power and authority. He'll give you victory over temptation. He'll give you authority over these things in this world. I know what I'm talking about, y'all. I know what the Lord can do. I've experienced him for myself. Job is going through hell. As Job is going through it, he's able to stand because he has the Holy Spirit living on the inside of him. So watch this right now. The Bible says that when Job arose, all the wickedness came in that one day. He arose, verse 20. Job chapter 1, verse 20. He arose, he rent his mantle, he shaved his head. He fell down upon the ground and the Bible says he began to worship. What? Yeah, he began to worship and said, naked I came out of my mother's womb and naked I shall return. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord in all this Job sin not nor charge God foolishly. Did you hear what I just said in your Bible? Did you read that right here in your word? The Bible says that when Job went all of this, yeah, he began to be remorse. He shaved his head took his mantle, he fell down, and when he fell down on the ground, the Bible says he began to worship. And I want to come by to let you know today that it may be ground zero for you. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I don't know if that's you. Come on, say amen. I don't know if you ain't exposed, but listen, sometimes you may be on ground zero but ground zero is good, y'all, because when Job got down, the Bible says that he began to worship. He, he began to cry out to God. He, he, he began to recognize that, wait a minute, I'm going through hell, but I still got to bless his name. I'm going through trial, but I still got to worship because worship it is not just you getting something from God. But worship is God putting something inside of you. <laughs> worship is not you getting something from God. Worship is God putting something inside of you. And when Job goes through hell, he's able to pull up on the inside of him what God had already put there. And that was the Holy Spirit. Job begins to worship Ah, can you worship God? Can you thank God? Can you say, Lord, I bless your name, even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of your trial and your situation, even in the midst of these last days, can you still worship God? Can you still bless God? Can you allow God to brag on you and still worship? In Job chapter 2, my text when I began reading today, th th that was the second test. Th this, th Job 1, he went through hell. Job, Job 2 
Satan showed up and began to afflict his body. Skin to skin. He began to afflict his body. And when, when, when Satan began to afflict his body, verse 4, skin to skin, he said, put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. The Satan's accusation. Satan's accusation was that Job is going to curse you to your face. And verse 6 says, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in your hand, but save his life. <laughs> you can't take his life. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord and he smote Job with boils from the sole of his feet all the way to the crown. Job's wife shows up and she has every right, y'all. I know we're hard on Sister Job. She has every right because that's her husband. She's a concerned wife. But even here, the enemy uses her because she said, the wife said in verse nine, does thou still retain thy integrity? Because that's the issue. She said, curse God and die. I only got time with that word, uh, curse God and die is Barak and it literally can mean bless God or it can mean curse God. Job decided he was going to bless God because the proper response in difficulty is to bless God. I want to grow your faith just for a moment right now. I'm trying to grow your faith for a moment. J James chapter one. You remember James chapter one? Just go there real quick. J James chapter one. I I'm done. I'm done. J James chapter one. H here it is. James chapter one. The Bible says these words right here, James 1. <laughs> Talk about growing your faith. Yeah. Have mercy. Are you there? J James chapter 1. The Bible says, My brother, verse 2, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect. And entice, wanting nothing. What, what, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, it works patience. Sometimes God allows us to go through the trial because he's trying to perfect us. How does gold come out? How does gold shine like it does? You already know it must go through the fire. It has to go through the fire. Here's a word that you won't probably say amen on or shout about. But we have to go through the fire in order for our characters to be perfected. Your character is not going to be perfected by just easy peasy. No kind of pressure that comes your way. No. Nah. Trials build our faith. The difficulty builds our faith. And here's what the Bible reminds us of today. I don't have time to preach the whole book of Job. There's a whole lot of chapters. But Job does come to a point in his life where he begins to question God. And he's like, God, man, where were you? God, what's going on? Read that thing. God was like, Job 38, God, you look through all that through 42. Job was like, uh, God said, where were you when I told the ocean can only go so far? <laughs> where were you, Job, when I told the stars where to go and, and I put the sun in place and I put the moon in? Job, where were you? And Job, God begins to run off a litany of questions to Job and, and Job has no response because Job recognizes that God is sovereign and, and that God knows what's best. So Job simply says, who? My bad, God, you right, you in control. At the end of Job's life, here is the beauty of this life right now, y'all, that even though we go through times of trouble, even though we go through times of sorrow, even though we go through times of great disappointment, in the end, it's going to be all worth it. In the end, it's going to be all worth it. Listen, we appreciate the gifts that we have to put some work into it. My, my children, they uh, sometimes I think they don't appreciate some of the things we do for them. And, but let them work for that thing. 
Let them put their own money into that thing. Ooh, they appreciate it a whole lot more. Why? Why? Because when you invest in it, when you had to put some sweat, and when you went through that thing, Isaiah 43 reminds us that when you go through the fire, God goes through the fire with you. When you go through the floods, God is there with you. When all this stuff, God is still there. He goes through this time of sorrow with us. Well, at the end of Job's life, he had lost everything. Except for his wife, he still had his wife. And the Bible says that God gave him back everything that he lost. God gave him riches. God gave him back children. God gave him back everything. And that's the story of redemption. That's the story of the great controversy. That we go through, Elder Stewart reminds us, we go through it. But God goes through it with us. God restored Job and allowed for Job's ladder to be even greater than his beginning. Can I remind you, your ladder is going to be greater than your beginning. What do I mean? Because your ladder is heaven. Your, your ladder is seeing Jesus face to face in the earth made new. You got to go through it, but God goes through it with you. Listen, my, um, I got to share before my grandmother, uh, before she passed away in Huntsville, she had dementia. She, all time is dementia. I'm not sure which one, but she was losing. She had lost her memory. It was one of the most depressing things ever to go to my grandparents' house and my grandmother be sitting on the couch. And when I come in, um, she's trying to call my name, but she can't remember my name. She can't remember some basic things in life. She's trying to have a conversation. She repeats herself over and over, tells the same story over and over and over again. It's like, man, she does not remember. She just told that same story. Never forget, I asked her a question. I said, Grandma, when did you come to Jesus? She, she had been telling the same story. She can't remember anything, can't remember her own name. I'm like, Grandma, when did you come to Christ? And she was like, oh, grandson? What, 19? So, I mean, she just, I was like, man, she just started recalling that whole thing. She was like, Grandma, well, how'd you get your life to Christ? Oh, it was at a tent meeting. The evangelist. And she called me. She was going, and she couldn't remember my name but she never forgot how good the Lord had been to her. Sometimes I think as Christians, we have spiritual amnesia ourselves, spiritual dementia. Sometimes we forget how good God has been to us. We forget that God is still making ways. Though he slay me, Job declared in Job 13, verse 15, yet will I still trust him. Listen, I want to pray for you today, and I, I don't know what you're facing right now, but I want to pray your victory in the name of Jesus. Listen, I want you to share this today because I, I want somebody, I want somebody right now who's going through a very difficult time to hear this message right here. That God's gonna be with you in this darkness. God's gonna be with you through the storm. He'll be with you through your pain. Listen, if, if you just want to cry out today and say, Lord, I need for you to give me strength to continue to make it through. Just put your name in that chat right there. Just That's all. God, God I just need the strength to go through. I, I don't, I'm not asking for a whole lot. No, no, I just, I just need the strength for you to help me to navigate this time that I'm facing right now. God will give you strength and God will give you victory and God will give you everything that you need. Ah, just put your name right there in that chat. I'm praying for you right now. I'm praying for you. I will look at this over and over again and call out your name. Because I know that God is able. If you need prayer today, prayer at Shiloh, Chicago, SDA.org. It's, it's on the screen. I think I always get it wrong, but it's, it's on there. Put it up right now. Put it up on the, in the chat. Decision and prayer. You can email us. Many have done it from all across the world. And we're praying for you. One more time before I pray right now. The dark clouds will come. The storms will come. You will be tested like Job. 
You will go through a time of trouble, but God will be with you every step of the way. God is bragging on you. God wants to say, hold up. Is your faith in order? Is your integrity in order? Can you stand? And today, God says, I know you can. I waited. I measured the trial. And I know my grace is sufficient. I'm going to give you power to make it. So when you felt like you could not make it, dry those eyes. When you felt like God was not near, he is near. He's a present help in the time of trouble. If anything, you ought to remember right now, is when my grandmother remembered that God is on our side. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call out today every single name in that chat, Father, right now. Lord, in this virtual platform, dear God, Lord, we long to see each other face to face still, but we know that your spirit is still moving. And God, through all the difficulty, through all the trial, God, we know that you're a present help in the time of trouble. And I pray now, God, right now that you'll give that person that put their name in that chat, God, that person today that's struggling, that person, God, who has gone through a hellish situation. God, today, bring them through. Give them victory in the name of Jesus. Victory belongs to us because we're on your side, God. Do it right now. God, speak faith right now. Speak forgiveness of sins, God, right now. I speak, oh God, that your word will be seed in our hearts that will carry us from this time and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray today. Amen and amen. Listen, I pray today. That word was a blessing. I pray today that you'll walk with God even closer now than ever before. I'm Pastor William Lee, and I approve this message. Though he slay me, I'm a still trust in God. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day in Jesus' name.